For my money, Under the Surface is one of the harder heists in the game, especially when you're trying to get all the loot. So I want to show you guys a method I've been using and some tips and tricks that make it a lot easier. So first thing you want to do is make sure you bring a zipline bag. This is one heist where it helps a lot because it gets rid of some awkward bag moving at the end. If you don't know, you can go to the weapon vendor and buy zipline bags and then they'll be available to you in the heist prep. If you have the dumpster drop off available though, take that instead, it's a lot better than the zipline. Next you want to gain access to the second floor of the building and find the security room. There's a ridiculous number of cameras in this heist and it's really hard to do anything while they're up so disabling them should be your top priority. The security room will always be in one of three hallways accessible from a stair on the roof so if you don't find it right away go up to the roof and try one of the other hallways. Getting familiar with these stairs and hallways is really important to do this heist well but I'll talk about that more a little later. So once you find the security room get in there and take out the guard. Look for a phone too. You should look for a phone every time you're in one of these rooms because you need three to open the downstairs exhibits. The second floor exhibits can actually all be open from the roof so you don't need phones for them. Other rooms you'll need to open are the manager's office so you can get the flash drive and the server room so you can get the scanner. You can get them at any time but I like to open these rooms up as soon as I can whenever the coast is clear. I also like to start opening up the exhibits as soon as possible so I always start with the second floor exhibits since they're easily accessed from the roof. Not only do you reduce the number of phones you need when you go from the roof, it's also a lot easier to get past the security measures inside the room. You see with E4 I just drop down once, twice, and the switch is right there. E5 same thing drop once, twice, make one jump. It's a lot easier than going across the whole room. Be careful on E6, you see right now I'm crouched in the vent, right? So when you drop down, you're still crouched. You have to stand up, otherwise when you jump you'll do a little bunny hop and land short and trip the alarm. Then E7 is also accessed from a vent, you just go under a couple of lasers, and boom, all the upstairs exhibits are clear. The reason I like to open these exhibits early as well as the hallway rooms is because it gives you more safe spaces to hide. Guards don't come into these rooms so you can always duck inside and they make moving around the map a lot easier. It's especially useful for the next part which is the Wi-Fi circles for the security bars. So find the control panel, right here I'm moving through the gallery to get to it which is actually something I don't recommend you do. If you want to be safe it's always best to move from one side of the building to the other using the roof because that's another completely safe space. Really you should be spending as little time inside the gallery itself and as much time on the roof as you can during this heist. But anyway, once you get to the control panel, now you have to do the circles and here's where getting the exhibits open is going to pay off. A lot of the circle spawns are right in front of the exhibit doors. This makes it so much safer to do these circles when you can quickly duck into the room if any guards come along. The best circles are the ones beside doors and ones in corners that let you see if anyone's coming. Right here I can either go to E6 or to the break room to hide depending on where a guard comes from. Here I don't want to do the circle in front of the stairs because it's pretty exposed so I go up to the roof, move across to E4 so so I can come down right by these circles and I go for this one because it's got a little more cover. So with the circles done, it's time to start robbing. Go through each exhibit and bring the bags up to the roof using the nearest access point. Like I mentioned earlier, knowing the layout of the stairs is really important so if you take a look at these little diagrams, you've got the roof and the second floor. So you see for E4 you want to use the subway fire escape that's right beside it. For E5 and E6 you want to use the brick staircase, I call it that because it's housed in this little brick structure on the roof. It's right beside E5 so that's easy. For for E6 you have to move across the hallway so it can help to have the other room open to hide or stash the bags while you grab the other ones. You can also leave the bags inside the staircase because guards don't go into the brick staircase. Just make sure if you are leaving bags in a room that you close the door behind you so no guards see them. Same goes for exhibit doors, try to keep those closed at all times too. And then for E7 you want to go out these windows and use the waterfront fire escape. This is also going to be just as important for getting the bags out of the downstairs exhibits so we'll come back to it in a minute. In the meantime, quick little tip, the med kit is very nice for this heist since you'll probably take a fair bit of fall damage using the roof entries. Alright, and now once you've got all the bags from the second floor to the roof, it's time to hit the first floor. So referring to the stairs again, there are two important things to remember this time. The waterfront fire escape hallway will have a staircase that goes from the second floor to the first floor and takes you right beside E1. The brick staircase runs all the way from the roof down to the first floor and comes out right beside E3. So by this point the game should be pointing to the first floor bar controls, but before you go for them, remember the most important thing is to open up all the exhibits. So go down whichever staircase you like and get the exhibits open. E1 and E2 are connected so you get two for one, but be careful coming out of this vent beside E1. Surprise, motherfucker! The lead guard likes to look inside it even before you've opened it. The game also kind of makes you slide through it sometimes, so I like to stop myself as soon as I climb into it. 
Now you see here I opened E1 and E2 to start, then from here you're able to take a look and see where the guards are. This is really important to do when you're moving the bags, I'll show you that in a second, but for now the coast is pretty clear so I'm going to move over to E3, hit the switch real quick and go for this nice safe circle. Open up the exhibit real quick just to be safe, and now you want to do these circles like you did on the second floor, near doors, in corners. At this point the circles aren't ideal, 40 meters is not a bad circle but it's really far. 21 meters is terrible, don't do that one. So I go for the one under the stairs. After that I got the corner at E3 again which is really nice. This little path between E2 and E3 is generally pretty safe to move along so use it when you can. Alright so again once you're done with the circles it's time to rob. Here I start with E3. It's really easy since you can just grab the bags and take them straight to the roof. E1 and E2 are much more work because you're taking six bags out and it's not as quick or as easy to get to the stairs. There are two ways you can get bags out of here and how you want to decide is by watching the guards. So with the first bag I take a look and the path to E3 is clear so I go and drop the bag there. Then these guards don't really let me get get back to E2 so I go ahead and take the bag all the way up to the roof using the brick staircase. Then back down to E1 with the other staircase and the vent, grab the next one, and this time the vent is clear so I take it. This is pretty much how you want to proceed until all the bags are out of there. Going E3 takes a little longer but is definitely the safer route, whereas the vent is quicker but not only is the vent itself often crowded, but it also makes you pass through the waterfront hallway so that can be dangerous too. It's important to stay patient at this point, the worst thing you can do is throw the heist away when you're 20 or 30 minutes deep because you didn't want to wait for a guard to move. Now once you've got all the bags on the roof, gather them up nice and close to the zipline. You're not quite done yet though because guards will see bags on the zipline and there are two guards that patrol the hallway under you. So you want to keep tabs on them, either spotting them manually, using cameras or motion sensors, whatever you like as long as it lets you move the bags without them seeing. And once you've got all the bags from the roof to the dumpster, now you are pretty much done. There should be 20 bags to throw in the van, so make sure after you toss the last one that the objective is cleared and then you're good to go. So that's that, let me know what you think, if this is helpful to you, or if there are improvements you'd make to this method, and as always, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.